For the spherical mirrors lab, the first thing you'll do is estimate the focal length of the positive concave mirror by forming a real image of a real object. This is similar to when you first saw positive lenses uh, and formed an image of objects across the room. So if this represents the concave mirror, we could have a real object outside the window, and then you'll want to look for the real image formed in front of the concave mirror. So we can imagine rays coming in, bouncing off the mirror, and focusing on the uh, image. For part two, we're going to use auto-centering, which is like an analogous process to auto-collimation, except for a concave mirror. If you put If you put an object at the center of curvature of a positive mirror, I'll let this represent the object here, then the rays will travel away from that object, hit the mirror, and bounce back on themselves. So in this sense, like autocollimation, the rays leave the uh, source object and then return to a focused, clear image at the same distance, that will be the case here as well. So for this object, you'll use the same object screen. So this will really be the, that black um, object screen with the cutout of an arrow in here, and you'll expect to see uh, an image of an arrow form down here. Part three. You're going to find the focal length by measuring object and image distances. So once again, if we have the spherical mirror here, you can place an actual object. In this case, it'll be the light source and locate images of the light source where they're formed, right? And you'll measure just as before, you'll use our sign convention, you'll measure object distances and you'll measure image distances, and you can tabulate those to find the uh, focal length through the vergence equation. Now, one suggestion here is to keep in mind the fact that the object and image can get in each other's way for a mirror. So keep in mind the, the fact that the light leaving the object has to bounce off the mirror and then go to the image. So you'll often want to raise the light source a little bit. So elevate the light source a little bit, and then when you're holding up a card to, to locate the image, you'll want to be sort of below the, the height of the light source. That way, light has a path to move around the uh, card that you're using to find the image. Part four is nicely illustrated in the lab instructions already. And that's simply using the idea that we can have a positive lens to create a real image like this. And then we can use that real image as a virtual object for a negative lens. And so we essentially look for this original location on the left. That will be the object and the image because we've sent rays in and then reflected them back upon themselves. So all these rays are going both directions and that light comes back to a focus at the same location. So again, you'll use the, the uh, same object screen that we have for, for autocollimation with the, with the arrow in, uh, slit in it. Finally, for part five, we get to use parallax again, everybody's favorite optical effect. Uh, in this case, you'll use one of the metal rods and place that in front of the uh, diverging mirror and then use uh, another rod as a marker to locate the virtual uh, image that you see. And again, by using parallax, you can adjust that back marker to find the actual location of the virtual image that's formed as you're looking into the mirror.